Hello everyone, my name is Katie Carson. I am the Duchess of Suds here at Royalty Soaps and I will make a brief apology for the lateness of this video. Should have gone up on Saturday, but we were at VidCon and we got really, really busy and it kind of just fell through the cracks. Also, the day right before we left for VidCon, we got some news about the business big changes, nothing bad, just really huge unexpected changes, which we will talk about as soon as we are able to. You can look forward to a very massive compiled video that I will be putting together. It will include lots of different clips that I will have to gather over time so that the story makes sense, but it is a story worth hearing. It's snow cone soap today, which is so, so fun. This is another one of the soaps where I'm like, I could have blended that longer and it would have been better, but then we made more and those actually did look better. Sometimes you guys are seeing like the very first thing that I make like right on camera and so the ones that I make off camera typically look a lot better than that. And today's video is also brought to you by Skillshare. I have talked about Skillshare a couple of times in the past. It is a fabulous, fabulous company that I stand behind 100%. I think they are so helpful. It is something we need on the internet. Skillshare is an online learning community with more than 25,000 classes. There are over 7 million users of Skillshare and they've got classes for every single thing you want to know, whether that is like just a creative hobby or professional business. They've got everything in the middle and on all ends of the spectrum. A premium membership gives you unlimited access to all of the classes and and community so that you can pick what is right for you. And it's really affordable, less than $10 a month if you pick the annual subscription. So if you wanna try it out, I highly recommend it. I personally have been using it recently to do some Photoshop tutorials because honestly, I'm not great at Photoshop. In fact, one might say I know nothing about Photoshop. <laughs> I typically use GIMP to do any design that I have to be using, but I'd like to upgrade to Photoshop because there's like so many more options. And across the board, it's just kind of the general industry standard. So I I'd like to be able to upgrade my knowledge and they have some really, really helpful classes for that. For any of y'all that want to try like graphic design or make your own soap labels if you're like a soap maker, really, really, really handy for that. There is a link down below in the top comment that is pinned and also the description box for you to sign up for Skillshare and get two months of premium for free. And who doesn't like free? If you don't love it, just unsubscribe, but you will, you will love it. And so stay subscribed and learn all the things. So thanks again to Skillshare for sponsoring the video. I very much appreciate that. Everyone here at Royalty Soaps appreciate that. We think you guys are great. And without further ado, let's make some soap. All right, let's begin the same way we do for every single high top soap. <laughs> we are changing it up ever so slightly by using a stainless steel strainer today because you guys asked for it and I do my best to accommodate you. Introducing a brand new stick blender. It's pink, it's 25 bucks, and it's on Amazon. So we approve. Now our soap batter is nice and runny. We've got three different colors we're working with today. So we're gonna pour it off into these lovely little mixing containers. Glop, glop. <laughs> so into our large container, we are adding some brilliant blue mica. It's so gorgeous and it makes such a deep shade of blue. Give that a scrippity scrapity, not a whippity wipity. <laughs> Oi! I use your catchphrases, you better use mine. We're gonna put some red in this one. I cut my finger. Oh no. <laughs> just kidding, it's just colorant. <laughs> We're gonna put a little true yellow in this one. And I'm gonna start by blending it all in with my spatula, because quite frankly, I cannot remember if this fragrance oil accelerates or not, so better say than sorry. I know 100% what I'm doing. Someone told me one time, Katie, I can't believe you're a professional soap maker. And I was like, I'm not. <laughs> I have never thought of myself in that way. I'm a professional crafter. I'm a crafty person that just happens to make money doing it. It still very much in some way feels like a hobby. I'm still getting to be just as creative as I want, which is rad. This red is the exact same color as the spatula, so I don't really know when it's all off. <laughs> 
the fragrance oil we are using today is Blue Raspberry Slushy from Nature's Garden. I thought, how fitting for a snow cone soap because it definitely smells like a snow cone. Smells so good. I may have filled this one a little too much. Wow, this kind of smells like an icy to me. Like, you know, the ices you get when you go to the theater or the cinema, depending on where you live. I think the cinema sounds so regal. That sounds like 1950s glamour. I'm wearing a suit to go watch this movie. Woohoo! Fragrance oil is blended in, so let's go ahead and pour these into the molds after this quick commercial break. Time to pour. So we're beginning with the blue. I will fill this up about halfway. Do the same on this side, about halfway up. All right, so let's start our drop swirl. I've had a couple of comments recently being like, why do you always do drop swirls? Because they look good, that's why. There are a lot of different swirls you can do with soap making, but I like color and I like my colors to stay very separate. Also, whenever you pipe a soap, you can only cut it a certain way. So whenever you have to do it that way, there's only very certain swirls that look good if you have to pour this way. And also, I have to be able to recreate the swirl multiple times. If you're just making one small batch of soap, you can pretty much do any type of swirl you want. But if you're having to recreate it multiple, multiple times, it's really not in your best interest to make something that is extremely complicated. The people I know that do soap making on a larger production meaning like more than 300 soaps a month. They don't do fancy soaps. They don't do them at all. They're just like, hey, no way. I got lots of soap to make. Here's two colors and that's what you get. And there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. And I can totally see why they do it because it is a lot easier to do it that way. It's better for your production time. And as Kenna Cody from Modern Soap Making says, you should be using 20% or less of your time on actual soap soap making, when you are a soap making small business. That should not be taking up the majority of your time. I will say in the future on this channel, there will be some soaps that we create that will not be recreated. So whatever you see us make on camera will be the only batch. And those will be the ones that we make really complicated, really complex, maybe have special swirls. They take a long time to do. I will also say for the people that I know that make a lot of soap and sell a lot of soap every month. I don't know anybody that makes as much as we do that makes them as complicated as we do. We also do eight new designs every single month. And typically I design over a hundred new soaps a year. A lot of people told me when I started that that business model wouldn't work. They're just like, uh, no, you need to have a standard line that you recreate multiple times. You need to limit yourself to three colors per bar. And I was like, no, <laughs> I want to do more than that. I don't want to limit myself that much. And I didn't have to, it works for us to do it this way. So moral of the story, break the status quo quo. If you're not uh, comfortable doing something that is the norm in your industry, find a way to not do it. <laughs> it also helps set you apart from everyone else. I also just want to clarify, I don't think my way of doing soapies are better than anybody else's. It is just my way of liking to do it. And this world needs all types of soap makers and all types of soapy businesses. What say we swirl the top of this just for funsies? Obviously, Obviously, we will have piping on the top, but sometimes it's fun to just go through and swirl it anyway because it's just nice to look upon as you were piping across it. This is a pretty popular way to swirl soap and I think it makes it look really, really good. It's just the right amount of swirl, but it leaves all that color very vivid. So now that it is unnecessarily swirled on top, I'm gonna mix up the soap frosting and we will get to piping that top.
So I've got my piping bag filled and I've put a stripe of red and yellow and blue to match the inside of the soap. It's still pretty runny because I'm gonna be putting salts on top of this one. So I don't want it to be super firm or else the salts won't stick to it. I'm gonna pipe a little down the middle until all three of the colors come out. There they go. Make sure we get that yellow all highlighted. This looks like a bomb pop. <laughs> I am gonna turn it slightly as I pipe that way all the pretty colors can be displayed. This reminds me of every summer carnival I ever went to. <laughs> Got sort of a mottled color coming out so I always place those in the middle. It's no big deal. It'll probably happen to you at least once whenever you're doing a three-toned piping and then once you get past that point like I have now you can go back to the edge where it's going to be appearing. Make sure you keep turning the piping bag so you've got all different colors being displayed. And actually, this particular soap is going to be a good deal covered up by salts that we're putting on the top. So if it isn't 100% perfect on this particular one, it doesn't even matter that much. A little on the top now, and I've rotated it again. You see there's some yellow and red right here. So now I'm trying to rotate it so there will be blue on the outside. And I got a stripe coming out that ain't real pretty, so I'm turning it again to kind of hide that. That's going to be the part that you're not going to be able to see anyway. And it just does that because no matter how hard I try to scrape the inside, it's always going to have just a teeny tiny bit that doesn't get picked up, and then that'll mix together with whatever color is coming out. And then it'll get cleaned up as you pipe along. Just going to add a teeny tiny little dollop because it's a snow cone. We don't want to overwhelm the top with a large spike so for the top, I decided that we should probably make it actually look like a snow cone. So I colored three different types of salt. We're gonna sprinkle them down the side and hopefully they stick and it looks like a rainbow snow cone with yellow in the middle and red and blue on the sides. So I'm gonna start here with this blue. I'm just gonna sprinkle down the sides. I'm being a little bit careful with this first pass and then I'll probably just use my hands to sprinkle the second one. Come here to this side, do the same over here. There they're gonna get everywhere. I am prepared <laughs> to deal with that. And I've used two tablespoons of these salts for just two loaves of soap because I really want it to cover as much as humanly possible. And I got this idea from Caleb who said one time that these look like little ice chunks. And I was like, hmm, ice chunks, you say? <laughs> that reminds me of a favorite treat of mine, a snow cone. With the blue done, I am wiping off my gloves so it doesn't get all on the next color. We're gonna put on the yellow right here in the middle all the way down the soap and once again the good thing is is that as you use this soap the salts are gonna come off but that pretty piping is gonna stay. I don't know what flavor this is but in Terrell there is a flavor called Tiger's Blood and it is so good. They put that on the snow cones. I think it's like a berry mix. Not real sure. Does anybody know? And now we will do the red on the other side. So again, it's gonna make a huge mess. I am prepared to clean it all up. I'm just sprinkling the first pass on so I can get that line where I want it. I'm gonna do the same over here. There's actually a lot of red on the piping over here, so that coordinates quite well. And I'm just gonna dump this. Let all those little extras fall off the side. That's the quickest way to clean it. All right. All right, let's go in for a close-up. <laughs> Y'all. <laughs> These are so fun. I love them. I really am digging the salt on top. I'm glad we went ahead and added that. So we're gonna wait 18 to 24 hours and then we'll come back and we will chop them and take a look at the inside after this quick commercial break. Ooh-wee boy howdy my friends. This is looking so nice the next day. Now I got these straws on here so I'm gonna have to flip it on its side. So let's pull one out of the middle and I'm already afraid just by looking on the edge here that I'm about to have to talk about a very common fragrance oil mistake that I just made. Yup, I sure am. <laughs> 
<laughs> so here's what's going on. You got all these little white specks and that's the fragrance oil that didn't get mixed in completely. It has been turned into soap. It just didn't get fully incorporated into the entire batch at large. So it's making lots of little white spots in the soap. That's called ricing. It's what happens when the fragrance oil hits the batter and kind of curdles a little bit. It makes, you know, like little chunks of rice. So to beat that, you're gonna stick blend. I did not stick blend. I blended in my fragrance oil with a spatula and that's why this happened. So in the future, that's what you're gonna have to do to beat out the ricing. And also, just in case y'all wanted to know, if you're gonna use the blue raspberry slushy in the future, you're gonna have to watch out for this. But let's take a moment to focus on the good thing, this piping. So you can see the mottled red, blue, and yellow up top. It did exactly what I wanted it to. And the top really does look like a snow cone and it does smell absolutely incredible. So future Katie is gonna insert a picture right here of the soap when it's made properly and that fragrance oil has been blended in instead of mixed in with a spatula. This is what the soap is supposed supposed to look like. Now, for the question of the day, do you like snow cones or shaved ice better? Yes, there is a difference. I personally like shaved ice more. I always feel like I'm getting more for my money with shaved ice, but snow cones are really good if it's really, really hot outside. So to vote on the question of the day, simply click the I in the upper right hand corner of the screen. So what you guys think about those primary soap colors, hmm? You got the red, you got the blue, you got the green. Green, since when has green been a primary color? Oh no. I may or may not have just gotten back from VidCon yesterday at like 1 a.m. with a newborn. Please give me a break. We got the red, we got the blue, we got the yellow, and they didn't mix, which I dig. Thanks you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed today's video, please give it a big thumbs up. Maybe think about subscribing to the channel if you wanna see more videos like this. Leave us a comment down below. We've got Instagram for you all the Instagrams we got Kenny's Instagram we got my Instagram we got royalty soaps Instagram and if you're not on Instagram this doesn't apply to you and be sure you do something fun for yourself today whether that is going out and getting yourself a snow cone come on now we all want to do it there's one in tarot called tiger ice really really good or plant yourself a little plant okay when I went to California there are succulents growing out of the cracks in the pavement on the sidewalk such an inspiration I feel finally have some growing in the window. We'll see how long it takes me to kill them. I'll keep you posted. So until next time, you guys have an absolutely royal day and I'll see you soon. Bye for now. Meow.